In this brief tutorial, we are going to be talking about WordPress plugins. So first of all, what are they? So plugins will add to that basic functions that you can uh, use in WordPress. So it helps you be able to operationalize what you want your website to do. Uh, why do you need plugins? Why can't you just download WordPress.org or use uh, the use WordPress.com. Why can't you just use those and not use plugins at all? Well, it's basically because WordPress is designed to have a minimum amount of information of coding. And you, as a web designer, can decide what you need. What does your site need? That way you only, you only use the plugins that benefit your site and you avoid the ones that aren't beneficial and so that will help your site be faster we don't get that that bloat where there's all this unneeded coding uh, that creates problems and if you don't need the plugin sometimes they can mess up your website if you have some a plugin installed and activated that isn't needed it could interfere with the functioning of plugins that you need so Basically, a plugin is your way to customize. So I think you can kind of think of WordPress as being, oh, maybe a sketch pad and a pencil. And the plugins allow you to use colored markers or uh, allows you to use acrylic paints or watercolors. So it allows you to use what you want to use, but it starts out fairly plain. So there are a few types of plugins that you need. First of all, if you're going to be doing web design beyond just kind of a fun blog on the side, you really need to look at a block builder. This is how you insert elements into your individual pages, such as a text box or a list, an image, or a carousel, those types of things. Now, can you do this in WordPress without a plugin? Yes, but it's really limited and it is not attractive, generally speaking. So we want to look at a plugin that will make your life easier and make your website more attractive. So there are a few different plugins that you could use. So the major choices are Elementor, Divi and Gutenberg. Gutenberg is kind of the default on a lot of different web of uh, WordPress templates and it works. It's okay if you've never used anything else. You might like Gutenberg. So, okay, that's that's fine. But if you're going to be building more than one web page, I would really look at using either Elementor or Divi. And if you want to know which one is best, it depends. Let's talk about them. So first of all, Gutenberg, it's, it can be great for simple website building. So my first website, I didn't know what on earth I was doing. I just, you know, Googled videos here or there. And so I used Gutenberg and it was, you know, it was fine for what I was doing. I could get, easily get in blocks for texts and photos and it kind of is what it is. You can't customize as easily as you can in the other two programs. If you want to customize, you need to be able to code. Uh, Java, you need to be able to use JavaScript and modify existing blocks and then to manually code new blocks. So on the one hand, it's easy for super basic stuff. If you need to customize it, you need to know a bit more about, about coding, which a lot of new designers don't. And if you're uh, very good at coding, then you probably don't want to use Gutenberg because it's so basic and you would much rather use either of the other two, such as Elementor or Divi. So Gutenberg's there, and if you don't know any different, fine, use it. Elementor. This is a, has a free version, and the free version is pretty robust, which I like that it's not too basic. You can do quite a bit with it. Very customizable. There are tons of options, 
and uh, once you get the hang of it, it is super easy. There's a pro version, which if you're going to be doing this professionally, yeah, go ahead and buy that pro version and you can, you know, charge clients for it as well. Uh, but you know what? The free works pretty well. So you could start out with free and if you start to do professional web design, you could move on to pro or you could go with Divi. But this is what the Elementor plugin looks like. So if you're searching for plugins, this is the one you would look for. Next is Divi. Divi is very similar to Elementor in that it's robust, it's customizable, it has many options, it's easy to learn, it is both Elementor and Divi are quite attractive. Uh, you can build very attractive websites, but this one is not free. The cheapest version they have is $89 per year. But that's per year, you have to pay that every year. And they also have a more expensive option of right now in 2021, it's $249 for a lifetime subscription. And so if you are going to be designing websites professionally, then you go ahead. I would go for this lifetime. That's a really good deal. Again, you can build clients for this cost, so do it. And if I was going to pay for one, I would probably pay for Divi. But since I'm not paying, I am just using Elementor for free personally. Divi has a website where you would be downloading this from, so you're not going to get it in the a WordPress uh, dashboard. So you would need to go to the website, sign up and download it. They do have a free trial, but it's just for a short time. And then you would have to start to pay, but you could give it a try after learning Elementor perhaps, because then it's a easier learning curve to learn Divi and know if you like it well enough to buy it. The next type of plugin I want to talk about is something for SEO or search engine optimization. So Google doesn't automatically understand how to read your website, so we have to help it. So any type of search engine optimization plugin is going to guide you through the process of giving information to Google so they know what to do and what types of search queries to, uh, to suggest your website. So personally, I like Yoast SEO. It is probably one of the most popular SEOs and I really like it because it has great step-by-step -step instructions and for, for new web designers, it is perfect for that. But I know I do have some web designer friends who aren't as fond of, of Yoast and they prefer Rank Math. SEO and that's also good. So definitely you can use either of these. Yoast has a free version and a pro version and I only use the free version myself. And one of the things I try to do when I'm finding plugins for the most part is try to work with all the free stuff and see how much you can do with it. And so if I recommend something a lot of times it's going to be something that's free, but I'll let you know if there's a paid version and if it's worth it. Now, if you are a professional web designer, this is your full-time job, you might want the paid version of the SEO, but if you're doing a, one or two websites, uh, helping out here or there, the free version is actually pretty good. So first of all, this is what Yoast SEO looks like. And just to give you an example on one of my sites, this is what it does. So it will guide you through this process of what types of things you need to do. So it's telling me right now that my SEO has this happy face, so kind of a green light, so I'm okay for SEO. Uh, so I have put in what I think is the focus key phrase, communication professor, and I can see if somebody is going to search communication professor and mine, mine comes up, this is what it would look like on mobile. I could click here and see what it would look like on desktop. 
and we will talk a lot more about SEO later and when we talk about how to do it, but I just wanted to show you the types of things you can do. So you want to give a title in SEO as well, and you want to uh, write a slug and a meta description. So these are things that aren't necessarily going to be seen by users, but it's how we tell Google what this is about. So I have a good SEO because it walked me through this process. So I wrote something and it would say, mm, not quite there yet. You need to say communication more times. You've only said it twice. You need to say it more times on this page. And so then I fix it and then it tells me if I did a good job. But if you notice, I have a readability score and I don't have a very good readability score. It is telling me that there is uh, there are some problems. So, yeah, one of the problems of being a college professor is that I don't generally have an easy reading score that I tend to write at a higher level than seventh grade level, which is what we generally try to kind of write for a middle school, junior high school level in the United States. And I'm a bit more complicated than that. So that gives me a poor score there. Um, also, I have too many sentences. I've used a passive voice, which I really should not do. So I have to go back and change that. I mean, academic writing, we don't want to use passive. Okay, so anyways, uh, it tells me what's good and what's bad. So this is the Yoast, I like it. A rank math SEO, this is what the plugin looks like. And uh, as I mentioned, I know web designers who prefer this one. And this is a great one as well. I haven't used it a whole lot myself, although I've installed it in my latest website so I could get a little bit more experience with it. And I'll let you know what I think in, in a couple months. The third type of plugin that you need is access to Google Analytics. So you need to be able to see what is happening in Google. So I think you need to get the site kit by Google. It's the official WordPress plugin. And then you can get insights on your dashboard in WordPress, but also it will easily take you uh, into Google to look at the more, at look at, to look at other, so that you can look at other things. Um, so let me show you. So I'm gonna go to, this is one of my websites for a podcast. This is the very first one I built, so it was before I learned much. And I might go back and rebuild this whole thing now that I have been studying word design, I'm web page design, and I understand WordPress so much better. And I could redo this entire thing when I have time. So uh, I have the, in the plugins, I have the, the site kit. So you can see it gives me a dashboard, a search console. I can look at the, if I wanted to run ads and get the analytics. And so I get basic information. So over the last seven days, uh, how, how many searches have there been? How many impressions have there been? What's the average click through rate? and my average position. So if somebody's going to search keywords, I am 15.9. That is not a great one. That wouldn't get me on the first page, which is what I'd prefer. And so I have not optimized this one like I should. Uh, other ones are optimized. So this is how we see it in our dashboard. But then I could say see full stats in search console. And if I click on that, it's gonna take me here to Google to look at much more complete data. So this tells me, you know, for instance, I've had nearly 10,000 impressions in the past 10 months. And I'm pretty happy with that, frankly. It gives me the graph of when this was. Uh, it tells me the search words that people are using to get to me. And there are other things like it will tell me too. There's so many things I can click on down here. Uh, but one thing is one of the first days of class I talked about that Google wants to know that your website is an authority that other people link to it. And if we go down to, uh, to look at this links, this tells me whether or not my site is being seen as an authority. And you know what? We're doing pretty well for a small little podcast site. It has been linked 
the just the home page alone 533 times but then other pages have been linked quite a bit as well and then it tells me who's doing the linking so I'm pretty happy with that frankly so that is your Google site kit and you definitely want to get that and this is just a few more things that you just give some information about what you can what you see and access with this plugin. All right, the fourth type of plugin, security. We need to make sure that your website is secure and there are there are people and bots that will hack and try to get into your site and we want to find solutions so that it's not easy for them. So, we want to look at some website security plugins but before you, well, if you're doing a, a new install of a website, this is one of the first things that you would do. Um, you would put in a, a security plugin and then you would start building your site. Now, if you've already started building your site and you're coming back later to do a security plugin, you'll want to do a backup of your site just in case it messes up uh, what you have already been working on. If you just have a couple pages, such as students in my classes, we just have one or two test pages so far, and you're, you're fine with putting this in because even if something gets messed up, that's a valuable experience to see what happens and then just to rebuild the very simple web page or two that we have at this point. But if you're doing this after you've been working on your website for weeks or months and you have a lot of great things that you love, back it up before you install or update website security. So there are two I want to talk about. The first is this one, the all-in-one web, uh, all-in-one WordPress security and firewall. This is free and I think this is a great basic security plugin. This is one that my web design guru that I did a lot of my training with this summer. This is the one he liked. He uses it on his um, on professional accounts. The, the when he's creating web pages for clients, he'll use this, and is he's pretty happy with it. And I have been too, as I have been using it. I have not had any problems with it. It's been very straightforward and effective. So I like this a lot. The other big one that people use with WordPress is iThemes Security. And until August 2021, I think this would have been the top recommendation, but version eight had a pretty significant upgrade, or actually not upgrade, update. And a lot of web designers are not seeing it as an upgrade. They're seeing it as a downgrade because they lost a lot of functionality and it doesn't work as well. And I went to install it in September of 2021 on one of my newer websites and I was not at all happy with it. So I deactivated it. But if it, if it improves, which I imagine they'll improve it soon with all of the complaints, it was five stars until about a month ago and now suddenly it is not because most of the newest reviews are one star with this new update. But also if you are going to be doing websites professionally, you probably want to get the pro version of this. There's a lot more customization that you can do. Uh, and not just if you're doing professional websites, but if you're doing professional websites that have e-commerce, if you're selling things, that's when I would recommend you get the pro version. But if you're doing kind of blogging or portfolio pages, informational web pages, websites, then it, you don't need the paid version most likely. Um, and just to mention with that iTheme security, they are kind of notorious for sending tons of emails unless you turn off settings. So I put a couple here. If you do ever get it, that you would want to go to the notification center and turn off the security digest that they send you with all of the things that have been dealt with um, every time that there has been an attack. If somebody has tried to get into your account, they'll send you that information. If they've locked somebody out of the site because they've tried to attack it, they'll send you that. They will also uh, tell you anytime something's been changed 
And most designers do not want to get a website every hour or more. Uh, so because bots do a fair amount of attacking on websites. And so it, we just, a lot of designers just turn off the notifications. All right, the fifth type of uh, plugin that you want to look at are those that will optimize your website. So I have a few here that I like that I wanted to bring up. Uh, the first is AMP for WP, and this basically just helps your website go faster when we're optimizing for mobile. If you remember, we're trying to build our website so they work just as well on mobile as they do on a desktop as they do on a tablet. So this in particular helps us with the mobile. And Google prioritizes websites that are optimized for mobile. So this is good. This helps us to get a better score on Google so they're more likely to recommend us when somebody does a search. So this is great and it is free as well. Auto optimize. And so this will help us speed up the website as well. And this is going to be working more with the language in your site. So it's going to be looking at uh, JavaScript, uh, CSS, uh, uh, HTML, and fonts. So it is looking at some of these different word text related things and making your site work better. It's free as well, and I've had great luck with this particular plugin. Then there's Hummingbird, and Hummingbird will work with your assets, so your images. It will work with your logos, that type of thing, and it will improve your page load speed. Now we work with Hummingbird and Smush work with the two of them together, and it doesn't, once you install and activate, it doesn't work automatically. You have to tell it. So I, I load, I installed and activated these on one of my websites. And as I was just looking at them and going back to take some screenshots, I realized that on one of my sites, I had never actually used it. It so it was in there, but it gave me this little message like, Wouldn't you like to use Smush? You haven't optimized anything yet. And I was like, Oh, yeah, that's right. Even though it's there, it doesn't do it automatically. Some of these are automatic, so the, the website security, once you have that set up, that's just automatic. But something like this hummingbird, we have to actually, uh, we have to actually use uh, so. This just gives some advice, or not advice, some information about what Hummingbird does. Another optimization plugin would be Broken Link Checker. So this will take a look to see if you have any broken links because we don't want that for our users. That's just frustrating if they come to your website and click on a link and it doesn't take them anywhere. So this will notify you. Link, broken links happen all the time. If you have linked to somebody else's site and they change their site, you'll want to know so you don't know, so you no longer have a link to uh, somebody else's site that doesn't actually work. So this is great and free. Now for commerce, if you are going to sell things on your site, you'll need to have a plugin that will help you with this. My major suggestion is WooCommerce. This is just easy. You can set up a storefront so you have a store that looks customized. It works well for you. You can use those, you know, kind of a block builder again to make it look how you want it to look. It's very, very easy. It also links in with a search engine optimization so that it will makes it more likely that Google will recommend your site. And WooCommerce is one of the reasons why people, while well, web designers still are going to WordPress to build and customize websites is because WooCommerce works so well on that. Whereas other platforms like Squarespace or Wix, it's not as clear, straightforward, or secure from this financial standpoint. Uh, and here, I'm just telling you what my web designer friends tell me. So if you're Wix or Squarespace, I'm sorry if I have just disrespected you. But according to my friends in web design, 
WordPress and WooCommerce is what they recommend. Seventh type of plugin you'll want is some kind of backup plugin. You will want to back up a, your site before you would do, for instance, before you would install or update security, or just if you want to have a second version of your site. Maybe you are about to make some major changes, so you want to save a backup of how it looks before the changes. So after you make the changes, if it doesn't look good or you hate it, you can just go you can just go back to the and use the backup instead of changing everything around in the one, you know, instead of reverting the, you know, undoing those changes. So backup is important. I use Duplicator. This was one that my, my teacher this summer used and I've worked with it. There is a free version and a pro version. And the free version, it doesn't, it, it is not that robust. There are some workarounds that with the free version, you can still get this to work to back up a pretty large site, but it just takes a bit of work. It's not as easy and straightforward. But if you're in my class at Lee University and you need to back up your website and it's large and it won't happen easily with this free version, come talk to me and, and we will work with it and still do it for free, but I'll, we'll have to do it a little bit more individually. But I use this one and I like it. Another, another thing that you might want to have is a to do a plugin for a sitemap page. So just an easy way to, uh, to add a sitemap. And with this, we'll, we'd use shortcode, which is easy. So far in my classes, we haven't really covered shortcode, but it's a way to add just a little bit of coding in your website, but you don't have to have a coding class to do it. So it's kind of lovely. You get the experience of coding, but it's not complicated. It's kind of, we, we copy paste. So to me, it just makes me feel uh, accomplished. Like I can say, ah, oh, yes, I, I was doing some coding on my webpage today. Uh, and all I really did was copy paste in the correct spot. But then it turns out beautiful, like the sitemap page. And so with this, this is for your user who comes, uh, who's going to be on your website and they want to see everything that's on your website. They want to see a, a site map. This is a type of a plugin that helps them easily, nicely see everything on your website, see it mapped out. This is not for Google, for instance. Google is not going to search a plugin like this, but I don't want them to. This is to help anyone who comes to my website and wants to kind of poke around and see what's there. Now, I recommend that you search out web designers on you know on Google or Chrome um, Google or Bing whatever browser you use and then do search for web designers figure out what plugins they like what they recommend see what they do go on YouTube there are so many wonderful web designers on YouTube see what their favorite plugins are and try and play with them if you don't like them you can deactivate them and trash them but have fun with this and personalize your website so it does not look like anyone else's website. It looks like one that you created and it's fabulous.